so can a movie that is 36 years in the making really make a good sequel? Let's talk about it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporiums. Uh, it was a non-spoiler review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the newest film from director, of course, Tim Burton. Um, okay, so Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is, of course, a sequel, 36 years in the making, to be fairly honest. Uh, it's been quite a while since Tim Burton has revisited this property. It's been long gestating. It's a movie that, um, with Tim Burton's, you know, oeuvre of filmmaking recently is something to be worrisome. So if you're wondering what Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is about, it's basically about the death of a patriarch. It's about the family coming back to the town, which we actually find out it's called wind river apparently um and it's about a daughter and a mother who have not been around each other for quite a while it's also about a, a woman dealing with the fact that she can see spirits and you know that she's seen beetlejuice everywhere but it also is the story about you know a, a widowed woman who comes back to life who wants to of course you know get back with beetlejuice because she owes or he owes her a soul or whatever so in essence it's um a really what I would call a modern take on Beetlejuice because it's more of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice because, of course, Winona Ryder, of course, Catherine O'Hara, and, of course, brings in people like Jenna Ortega and Justin Theroux, as well as, a, 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 you know, people like, of course, Willem Dafoe and uh, Monica Bellucci. So that's kind of the non-spoiler take. You know, there is, it, be aware you probably will have seen this movie before you, you know, watch this video. But Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is something that is highly anticipated. It's supposed to make like $150 million this weekend. Uh, you know, at the point of this, you're probably watching this review, it probably did make $150 million. But it's a movie that a lot of people, including myself, because I'm a huge Beetlejuice fan, have been waiting for. Whether it should have haven't been made is another story. Everything about this film has been leaning towards Tim Burton going back to his roots of the kind of filmmaker he used to be, to doing practical effects, to being, you know, more nuanced with the kind of nature of who Tim Burton is as a director. You know, he's gotten to a point where he's now doing CG Dumbo movie or CG Charlie and Chocolate Factory. He kind of is not the director he used to be. He's given bigger inflated budgets. I think his ego's kind of gotten out of whack. And so him going back to this, this well, this franchise, I feel could have been something that could have gone one of two ways. It could have been interesting and a kind of a breath of fresh air or it could just be another tim burton movie of his last you know decades a couple decades now so bringing michael keaton back was a smart move uh why not a writer of course you know we know why jeffrey jones is not in the movie but Catherine o'hara who is having quite the fun career in her later stages of her life and you know monica bellucci is nice willem dafoe you know this also has some you know cameos in it that are kind of, kind of nice but the question really remains the question i have when going into this movie was is it going to be successful in at least the tone of what Beetlejuice is well I'm here to say that this movie is an interesting one and what I mean by that is it has all the tendencies of late Tim Burton where it feels overstuffed it has characters like Mon Monica Bellucci's character that don't need to be in this movie but it also harkens back to what makes Beetlejuice fun and what made Beetlejuice fun is wacky characters a wacky world uh, a movie with characters that actually have uh, emotion that actually have a semblance of you know depthness to them and has a protagonist or antagonist or whatever you want to call Beetlejuice at this moment that really sets the center stage of what makes this movie even work you know it's pretty impressive that Michael Keaton who is close to 70 years old at this point can still deliver Beetlejuice which is a very um, charismatic very uh, I wouldn't call it athletic but a very you know it's just a lot of moving parts and pieces to a character that has to be very flamboyant and very just kind of gross but also very charming and it, he does it with such style it, they actually give a lot more depth to michael keaton himself or to i'm sorry to beetlejuice with michael keaton that it actually expands upon it. you know in the original movie you only got like 12 minutes of beetlejuice in total here there's actually whole 12 minute scenes 
with Beetlejuice for the hour and 45 minutes that this runtime is where we get scenes of him in the afterlife and we get scenes with him as a worker and him dealing with like his past and you know him still in love with Lydia and stuff like that it's there's a lot more depth to him that you actually get a lot more fun and allows Michael Keaton to kind of uh, be more uh, be more bombastic than what he was in the original movie but it also has these other characters like like bringing back you know Lydia Deeds's character who is just this woman who's kind of out of sword she's dealing with some past trauma with you know uh, her husband in that situation and she's having to deal with a kid who doesn't really want to talk to her with Astrid the Jenna Ortega character and you know because of the incidences that happen in Beetlejuice she's having the incidences here where she's having to deal with Beetlejuice but she's also having to deal with like seeing ghosts and having to deal with trauma and it really goes dark and deep with some of the trauma that is instilled with what, what Lydia Dietz has had to go through her whole entire life. She went through some pretty traumatic stuff in the original movie and here, you know, having to deal with like Astrid and stuff like that, the General Ortega character, it really is an emotional core that I really didn't see coming. I mean, it actually goes more beyond what even the characters in the original movie did. And I found that kind of uh, poetic in a lot of respects. It was actually kind of surprising the level of honesty and level of like um, acceptance and just kind of dealing with your nature of demons and stuff like that. It's a really kind of weirdly powerful thing for something that's about a demon creature that really wants to make love to a woman, you know, that type of thing. But it also has like fun characters in it. You know, Justin Thoreau plays that smarmy, soon to be husband who is kind of using Lydia in really interesting ways. And Justin Thoreau is just kind of throwing everything he can at the screen. And I kind of love him for it. Catherine O'Hara is kind of enhanced her performance from her original movie from the original movie she's having to deal with the death of her husband as we see in the trailer she's just having to deal with like the manic nature of who she is now that she's kind of unbound from charles's character and kind of the nature of how insane she is in the mental state in the head and her character goes some really interesting places and has some really funny moments and that's just the nature of who Catherine O'Hara is she's just a really funny actress but then you have like the the smaller characters you have you know the the character that is played by Willem Dafoe who is this detective who has a really funny story and really fits into the world is he the most important character no but like Tim Burns allowing Willem Dafoe to just kind of throw himself out there in a very fun and energetic way and I just really appreciate that and um you know there are other characters in this movie there's a boy that you know Jenna Traga's Astrid meets that has a really interesting story that you know you might see coming or whatever but um, there's also other characters, like I said, the one character that doesn't really get much to do is Monica Bellucci, which has a really interesting setup, but just doesn't really do much for the story, to be fairly honest. It pays off a story beat that happened at the very end of the first movie, and I just didn't feel like she had really much charisma, or, or not charisma, but she didn't really have much going for her character. Yes, she's integral to why they get from beat to beat to beat, but she kind of disappears in the movie, which is kind of a problem. And, you know, it's like other story beats with, like, you know, the town and how that operates. We get more of the town, and it feels like a bigger budgeted movie, and it feels like more expanded upon, you know, when we get the opening shots, we see how different this Wind River this town is when it used to be, like, a town of probably a few hundred people. Now it's, like, an expansive, you know, as we see, in the world and I, I i don't know it's just a, it's a really interesting weird it's a, a very very weird movie it goes to like even for tim burton it goes some weird weird places there are scenes in this movie that do some really off the wall weird crazy i'm like what is going on but i still kind of love the audacity for what it's doing you know i still have problems with the movie I, like i said there are scenes like you'll see in the trailer with the, the train and the dancing people, which feels so out of place. And I, I know what they're going for, but then there's tendencies of just like kind of taking too long to get to your point, you know, having characters in this movie like the Monica Bellucci character and just not really doing much with her. And the audacities of Tim Burton to just kind of be overexposed with his kind of directorial style and just kind of not really feeling the nature of what he is known for doing. It's his tendencies of like overexposing things and making things feel like kind of um, superficial in a lot of respects. And that's what this movie does. There are points where I'm like, this feels like a TV movie or something you would see on Netflix or, you know, Max or whatever. 
And then there are times where it really feels like a Beetlejuice movie, like when it's down in the underworld and stuff like that. There is, like, the set pieces are, you know, they're visually constructed, once again, by Bo Welch, who did the original set pieces. And, but once again, like, when it goes to, like, the town and stuff like that, it just, it really feels kind of bland and simple and not really that exciting, to be fairly honest. It was kind of off-putting, but... The the funny thing, though, is I really found after this movie kind of got going after a little bit, it took about 10, 15 minutes to get going. But once it did, I think I just kind of grooved with it. I really did. I think I just had fun with it. Once again, it's not a perfect movie. It's not something that you'll you'll find yourself at the end of the day going, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. But I weirdly loved this movie. It's just kind of strange. I really love the fact that Michael Keaton's role is expanded upon, that he still has the same ticks from the original movie, that it feels like a movie that does play, take place 36 years later, but it also feels like it fits at home in this world. And there are background characters and Bob, the, you know, the one that's working for, of course, Beetlejuice uh, is a really fun character. And the fact he can't talk and how he expresses himself is a lot of fun. But in the end, that's kind of where I'll leave my non-spoiler review. Like I said, I really enjoy this movie. That's, that's kind of where I boil it down to. It's a movie that, you know, I have to think about whether, you know, it could be a top 10 movie of the year. I, I don't know because we haven't gotten to the end of the year. But it's been a while since I had a lot of fun in a movie that was just kind of audacious and stupid and also very just energetic and weird and bonkers and ghost places and i think that's why i enjoyed this movie i think that's why it's a it's a fun entertaining you know sequel that should have been done a long long time ago but as we're as we're here in 2024 it's finally here but with that said that would be my take on beetlejuice beetlejuice thank you so much for watching comments below what do you think of this movie what do you think of like the weirdness of it the what was your favorite moment of it all that good stuff uh but if you like what you see on this channel hit the subscribe button the join movie emporium hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button and uh we'll see you guys for the next video Peace out, guys.